Hello dear students, today we are going to learn about the diseases of mango. As we know that mango is a king of fruits, but unfortunately that mango is attacked by the different types of diseases. So in that topic we discuss about the, the diseases of mango along with their control measures. So let us see the first disease of mango is mango that is dieback disease of mango which is caused by the causal organism that is Botry Dipledio Theobromi. So the characteristics of that dieback so as we know that the name indicates dieback that means death of the plant is takes place from the from the back side that is from the branches that means that disease is characterized by the drying of branches and twigs from the tip to downwards and after onwards the complete defoliation of plant is takes place sometimes what happens in that picture you should know you should see that here discoloration of the leaves is takes place that means color of the leaves is changes from greenish to brownish in severe infestation what happens the longitudinal splitting of the stem is takes place as you know that here the if you split the stem with the help of nails so the here browning symptoms are observed here in third picture what happens the browning of tissue whatever the vascular tissue is present inside the stem so browning of stem is also takes place and here in severe infestation what happens the complete defoliation of the leaves or the drying of all the leaves and shading of the leaves is takes place in case of dieback disease so this is all about the symptoms of disease next one the perpetuation as we know that perpetuation means what the survival of pathogen in different host in unfavorable condition that means that pathogen is survive in the soil it may be on the seed or in or it may be in the any part of the plant when unfavorable condition is arises so the perpetuation of dieback is the infected twigs which containing the infected fruiting bodies of the fungus then how we have to manage or in case of management just we have to prune or cut the diseased twig or the leaves and after onwards we follow the or we spray the 1% borax mixture second we do that that is we have to select the cyan from the healthy trees which help the keep the disease keeping the disease under the check and last one is the cleanliness and the field sanitation is done by burning the plant debris regularly. So this is about the management practices. Then next disease is called as an anthragnose of mango. So as we know that anthragnose means what? The sudden death of the or sudden death of the different parts of the plants within a short period of time. So it is also a type of blight anthragnose is also type of a blight so that anthragnose of mango is caused by the causal organism that is coletotrichum gliosporoids it is a fungal disease what is the symptoms of that anthragnose when this fungus is attack on the plant so it com it covers the different all the parts of the plants like it directly attack on the leaves stem inflorescences along with the fruits when they attack when they attack on the leaves here what happens a small minute brownish spots are observed and when that brownish spots increases so that each and every brownish spots they are connected or coalesces with each other to form a large patch if 
such a brown patch or spot is observed on the fruits so dark uh, dark black colored spots are observed on the fruits and due to that the discoloration of fruits is also takes place sometimes the rotting of fruits is takes place if the infestation is severe so this is about the anthracnose the symptoms of anthracnose then the perpetuation so in case of that the primary source of infection that is psi is infected plant debris that means the spores of coleotrichum fungus is survive in plant debris and secondary source of infection is the airborne conidia then regarding management practices here the spraying of borax mixture that is 1% borax mixture or coc 0.25% or carbon dazim 0.1% or captan 0.2% is sprayed within 15 to 20 days of intervals till the harvesting so this is about the management strategies of anthracnose next one is mango mall formation as we know that mango mall formation so how we have to characterize this mango mall formation so before that we discuss about the causal organism that mango mall formation is takes place due to the attack of fusarium moniliform that disease is characterized by or it is also called as the bunchy top disease why it is called as a bunchy top disease because it having the bunchy top phase bunchy top phase that means what the young plants in the nursery example the seedlings in nursery of mango when they are reached to the 4 to 5 months old the growth of the plant is stopped and it gets the bunchy appearance that means all the floral parts is crowded at the top and it looked like it looked like the bunch so that's why it is called as an bunchy top phase so first phase is bunchy top phase second phase is called as an vegetative mall formation the second characteristic or symptoms is vegetative mall formation here it induces the excessive branches of limited growth in young seedlings that means only enormous or high branching of mango plant is takes place at one place so it is it is called as an vegetative malformation the next one is malformation of inflorescences the third one third characteristic is malformation of inflorescences it shows variation in the panicle formation so this is the three symptoms of mango formation first one is bunchy top phase third second one is vegetative malformation and third one is malformation of inflorescences so the primary source of infection is the a micro conidia because as we know that fusarium produces the micro conidia then second one is the in or second source of secondary source of infection is the diseased or propagating material that helps to spread the disease regarding management strategies of mango mall formation just we have to reduce the intensity of mango mall formation by spraying with naa at 100 to 200 ppm during the october session or no november session then next one we follow the pruning of diseased part and after pruning of that diseased part we just spray the carbon dazim 0.1% or captafol 0.2% it it effectively control the disease next one so, so as we know that here the bunchy top the bunchy or browning appearance mostly the bunchy appearance at the top is uh, uh, seen and here the vegetative that means all floral parts is transported into the leafy structure only next one is bacterial blight of mango which is caused by the fungus xanthomonas compestris so as we know that 
that disease is caused by the bacteria and it is characterized by the symptoms that is the burning of the plant is takes place from the tip or from the side of the margin and when the infestation is increases so what happens plant shows the burning appearance so this is about the bacterial blight of mango so regarding the perpetuation so primary source of infection is a infected plant debris and secondary source of infection is the airborne conidia sometimes airborne conidia will be there regarding management strategies we have to spread the carb we have to when the incidence is appears so we have to spray with bavistin 0.1% or coc 0.25% next one as we know that powdery mildew disease so as we know that it is caused by the fungus odium mangiferi and it is most important disease because once there is appearance of such a disease so it covers all the parts of the plants so when that attack of fungus is takes place it covers all the parts of the plants like mostly leaves inflorences fruits stem and etc so what happens the outer portion or the upper portion of the leaves here on the upper surface of leaves the whitish sometime grayish powdery growth on the inflorences and on the tender leaves is occurred and after that infection start from the tip of the inflorences and spread downwards and it cover the floral axis leaves and the stem the infected floral parts are severely damaged and it is dropped off so if the infestation is on the fruits so the dropping of the fruit is takes place so and photosynthetic activity is completely stopped due to the attack of that powdery mildew so this is uh, all about the symptoms of powdery mildew regarding perpetuation the primary source of infection is dormant mycelium and secondary source of infection that is ssi is airborne conidia then for management of powdery mildew we can spray 0.2% wettable sulfur or carbon decim 0.1% we can also apply the systemic fungicide for example hexaconazole 5% ec or 5 ec at a rate of 0.05% next one pink disease as we know that the pink disease the disease is caused by the botryo basidium salminocor and it is characterized by the pinkish powdery coating on the twig and branches as we know that the pinkish powdery coating is observed on the branches on the twigs and branches later the fungus in or that fungus attack on the bark and get enters inside the internal tissues and it interfere with the transfer of nutrients then if the fungal growth is takes place or spread it girdle the stem then the shredding of the bark is takes place and later on what happens the leaves turns yellow and dry the pink color on the tissue represent the conidia formation by the fungus hence the name is called as a pink disease then next one is loranthus of mango so as we know that loranthus of mango is caused by the organism causal organism called as a dendrop or dendrop t falcata so that loranthus is also called as mistel toads and it is partial stem parasite of many perennial dicot trees or it is partial parasite on mango citrus jackfruit and sapota what happens it shows the or one uh, suppose that loranthus 
it is having the functional leaves but they do not having the true leaf or true roots so due to that that it requires as we know that it is partial stem parasite so it requires compulsory one host for their survival or for to obtain the nutrients or water from them so that it is called as an partial stem parasite in absence of a host plant it is not survive so what happens here when the growth of or when the growth of that loranthesis takes place so it it produces the berry type of the fruits in large numbers when the bird comes in contact with that such a seeds of that loranthus so they consume the berries and disseminate the seeds which may adhere to the tree trunk at the branching junction of the host then the seeds on the host surface germinate on on the onset of monsoon and penetrate inside the host suppose that seed is enters or it is just deposited on the host here so on the onset of monsoon that seed get germinate that seed get germinate and during germination they absorb the water and nutrients or that seed produces a one fungal structure called as an hostorium inside the stem and it that hostorium is nothing but the absorbing organ it absorb the water and nutrient from the stem when they absorb the water and nutrient from the stem so the upward movement of water and nutrient is completely stopped and the main host the height of the main host is stunted the growth of main host or main plant is also stunted then plant shows a yellowing leaves here the plant shows the yellowing leaves and drying of the leaves is also takes place and here what happens at the in at the point of infection the gall like structure is also formed here the gall like structure is also formed so this is about the symptoms of loranthus of mango or loranthus then the for that management just we have to apply, apply the 0.5% glyphosate at the point of from where the loranthus is arises just then we have to remove the seeds before the multiplication or we have to remove the parasite from the infected branches before the flowering with the help of amar loranthus cutter that is special cutter is designed by the university for cutting of that loranthus branches so this is all about the loranthus of mango so this is all about the diseases of mango fruits so if you have any difficulty in that topic so you just whatsapp on my number thank you